Hey everyone, this is Let Me Know How It Is, a podcast about all things geek. This is a bad guy show, we're comparing doppelganger villains against original villains. If you're new to the show, welcome, we're so happy you found us. New episodes every Wednesday, and you can suggest a topic for us in the comments. Thanks for listening. All right, fellas, doppelganger bad guys versus original villains. To clarify, original, we basically mean a bad guy who doesn't share the same power set as the hero, whereas doppelganger does. So uh, I'm Zach Slater. I'm Frank Melman. I'm Tommy Smithereens. And I'm Clifton. So let's start with some of our favorite examples of each. Uh, I'm going to say let's start with doppelganger first. General Zod and Superman. There you go. Okay. Yeah, all the same powers, just the evil. He's just evil or hateful. Yeah, I always like the the idea when they contrast him as sort of being like being more militaristic, but really just comes off as evil. Yeah. yeah. Generally. I was going to say that too, whereas like, like Clark doesn't have any sort of like military training at all, but Zod does, which I think it, Zod usually runs in a, in a group. He's got a mm-hmm. gang with him. So yeah. I think that that makes it interesting that like that they're more trained and yet there's more numbers of them also. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And Superman's an easy one to get doppelgangers for. It just has to be any other Kryptonian because they'll yeah, all sure. get the same powers. Yeah. yeah. Or or Bizarro. Yeah. Yeah. But a weird one, too, is I thought it was Cyborg Superman. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Where he's yeah. not and he is in a way, you know? <laughs> Good old Hank Henshaw. Yes. Yeah. Well, Reed Richards, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what they're supposed <laughs> yeah. to be. Really? I didn't. I didn't. Now I see it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're supposed to be reading. It's supposed to be reading the Fantastic Four, and when they have a, that, they're like a challenger or a or a, a some kind of mission in mm-hmm. space. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean Henshaw's group? Yeah, I thought yeah. you meant the four Superman, and I was like, oh, I could kind of see that. No, no, no. Like they're supposed to be. Yeah, they're supposed to be in that when when in the origin of that group when he get when they introduce Hank Henshaw, that's his. Their origin is basically the, the Fantastic Four's origin. Okay. I and thought then, I thought you meant like steel was like the thing, and I was like I'm like why is there a girl? Superboy no, was was no. Human Torch. <laughs> yeah, Superboy was Human Torch. I'm like why did they do a girl? Then I had in my head I'm like oh maybe they didn't want to do Supergirl. No, right. no, she dies. <laughs> yeah. She dies. Yeah, because they make it. I mean, it, when he when that's the fake out for that whole thing is when you know spoiler for uh, for Death and Return of Superman is the fact that Hank Henshaw is a character that gets introduced. You know, comes back to Earth and then he can interact with machines. And then he slowly fades away and you think, oh, that guy, you know, it's unfortunate that guy died as a result of the accident. But really, no, he's still around, he, you know, and then doesn't come back until he comes back as Cyborg Superman. So. Got you. Wow. Yeah. This Very is dark. the most anybody's talked about Hank Henshaw on a podcast ever. <laughs> Possibly. We've tricked all of you guys. Really, this is a spotlight <laughs> on Cyborg Superman. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm. I'm going to throw Venom in the hat, of course. Sure. Yeah. He's an easy one. Yeah. Just, yeah. just, just big, <laughs> big and right. scary. If you go with the Eddie Brock one and the ranged. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I find it weird that they introduced him so late in Spider-Man's career. Yeah. yeah well, yeah, they that's had, true. They, they had a bunch of like, you know, they tried a bunch of different spider characters before him. Like they had like tarantula and I'm guessing Madam webs before that. And like, obviously all the spider women <laughs> at that point. Mm hmm. You know, they tried, but I don't think until they got to that, you know, if not for the, the symbiote suit, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, I was reading Spider-Man month to month then. I remember, you know, when you had that moment of him going to the Fantastic Four and finding out, oh, by the way, your suit's alive. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's like, <laughs> what? It's, yeah, right. And it's it's draining, you know, it's basically taking you out at night. And that's why you're so tired all the time. You know, I mean, we've talked about it before and in the animation episode, the one when, when they have that reveal of. You know, him fighting the, was it the secret? No, Sinister Six, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And you find out that moment, but at the same time, in, in both Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man and Amazing, you know, Peter's exhausted and can't figure out why. And the reason why is you find out, like I said, the suit's taking him out at night doing its own thing mm-hmm. while he sleeps. But up until that point, I mean, they don't really, you know, they sort of tease that something's going on in the background, but not, it's not, it's not like now where they had, a, a, it didn't feel the same feeling of revealing a character. Because Eddie Brock is not really important until after the fact. Yeah, right. You know, he's sort of he's sort of a throwaway character in in the in the Sin Eater story because basically they they screw up a um, they basically report that the Sin Eater is a different is a serial killer but it's a, or a 
yeah, cop killer, serial killer. I can't remember which, but basically it's revealed that, you know, they, they reveal the wrong source and it's headed Brock's fault. Basically say that, that someone else is it at the daily globe, not the, you know, like a rival paper. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I do have to say that from the beginning, it was pretty, you know, Venom from the beginning was a pretty cool concept that that last shot of, I think it's amazing two ninety nine when Mary Jane comes home to their apartment and she, you know, it's just Spider-Man in the quarter is what you think. And then all of a sudden you see that big grin for the first time. It's really effective. Like it really yeah. works. And then it became popular and they just oversaturated everything with him. Oh yeah. No, of course, for sure. But no, he's a, he's a great, he's a fun idea from the get go. How many, how many years publication wise is there between like the, the creation of the alien costume and, and Brock showing up as Venom? Um, Hmm. Because you have, like I said, it's introduced around, was it 252? Is when he is the first, I think is the first appearance of the, or, you know, first or second appearance of the costume. And then they retcon it back or, you know, Secret Wars hadn't come out at that point. I can't remember mm-hmm. which of the order is. I think that's what it was because there's a gap at the end. You know, the, all the heroes disappear in Central Park and end up in Secret Wars. And then the next month are all these changes. And it's like, people are like, whoa, how's the She-Hulk in the Fantastic Four? And why is Spider-Man in this costume? So from 251, 252, Spider-Man's costume was that, and then sort of backstory it for Secret Wars. So you find out like issue eight is where he gets the costume. I'd have to say it's at least, you know, four or five years before Venom is created in 300 or 299 is the first appearance. Okay. So you're talking a good, yeah, almost it's 50. Good, it's a good few years. 50 issues. Sure. So, yeah. you know, depending on, publishing stuff it's probably about four or five years Hmm. so but yeah i I think you know i think he's a cool idea but like i said it's one of those things where you know it's on he's in everything (laughs) after that every you know he becomes that that kind of character that they just sort of like you know put him in anything and they did so yeah definitely okay so who else is out there uh for me personally i think one of my favorite if we're talking doppelganger villains it's going to be a reverse flash Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm I'm a huge Eobarthon Mark. Awesome visual. <laughs> yeah, I love that character yeah. so much. You know, it's one of those things where, um, when they introduce him, you know, he's it's one of those stories of, you know, he's he's a guy from the future and he's come back and he's going to be in modern times. He's going to be the Flash, and then later on they sort of retcon to say that he's you know a Flash fan who's sort of taken on you know who wants to be the Flash. So I mean, it's one of the things where when when Barry Allen right before Crisis, where they're wrapping all that, you know, all that stuff up, you have the whole trial of the Flash. And I remember as a kid, you know, it's one of those things where right around the time they kill Iris in the comics, and this is like back in early 80, like it's probably early 80 or 81, they kill Iris and it looks like someone else did it. And then you find out, no, the first Flash did it. And then it becomes this whole thing of the Flash trying to deal with, you know, capturing and everything. It's just one of the things where he's such a, you know, he is a doppelganger, but he is, it's one of the few times I think a doppelganger actually applies because he's so awful. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's such a good opposite to Barry because, you know, I always think of Barry as sort of being, you know, the, the straight laced bow tie wearing Barry that we got for so long. But I think that, that, that Thawne is just a good, you know, a good flip side of that, you know, and even the fact, like I said, he ends up killing Iris, which is not, you know, which at that time, you know, we're not talking... It's not 80, you know, we're not talking after Watchmen, we're not talking after Dark Knight. It's not grim and gritty at that point, hmm. but it's a heavy story. <laughs> I mean, it's really, really heavy. And then the aftermath of him, you know, if you've never read it, I don't want to ruin it, but it's one of the things where how Barry deals with it and then Barry going into crisis is pretty big, especially for a character that's from the Silver Age. Hmm. Yeah, he's he's the one that I think feels like so intentional to be like like an evil like like um mirror image, right? Because mm-hmm, yeah. I mean his costume is is quite literally like the inverse, like color wise. He's the nigga <laughs> flash. Right? Of the of the flash. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. right. But he's also like like personality wise, like so different also. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's one of the things where even when they did rebirth or uh yeah, rebirth of the, the, the Flash rebirth. When when Jeff Johns did it, you know the, that was you know, the idea that you know in Barry's origin, there's no there's no there's no Wayne's in the in the in the alleyway moment in his in his origin, right? There's no you know last son of Krypton. There's no real tragedy. So even they retcon it further that they say that Thawne is responsible for killing Barry's parents and then or killing Barry's mom and making it look like his dad did it. Right. So Barry grows up without having, you know, without having parents, or his- which is how they do it in the TV show, which yeah. many people are, are familiar with. 
Yeah, yeah. So if you've seen the Flash television show, that's where that comes from. It's, it's a fairly, you know, recent, you know, retcon to the to that thing. And there's even an issue right before everything that happens in Flashpoint, not the tele- not the television show stuff, but the actual reboot of the DC universe where you get the new fifty two, where there's an issue where it's almost like every other page, something goes wrong with him trying to retcon things in, in his light in his timeline. Where that Jeff Johns has him just fix things over and over and over again in this one particular issue of The Flash. Huh, okay. So, that's, but I was just saying, the main thing is for the TV show, that's where that comes from is the idea that, you know, Barry's, otherwise it wasn't, it was just one of the things where he thought that it would make him a better hero if he had more tragedy in his life. Right. Yeah. And just like you guys said, this is the version you see in the TV show, but it's also like in the Flashpoint animated movie and, mm-hmm. you know, so yeah, it's getting, it's, it's becoming very, very prevalent in flash's history in flash's lore it's even in, it's even the justice league movie too because there's only that there's only a little bit with um i can't remember the actor's name oh uh ezra ezra miller yeah yes, when he goes yeah. to visit his dad in prison that's because the reason why his dad's in prison is because everyone thinks he killed you yeah know, barry's mom that's right i have a question about mm-hmm. what's the difference between him and zoom well zoom at one point was when wally west was a flash okay. so it's one point, well, I mean, again, I can totally spoil the end of Barry's run before he goes into crisis, if you want me to do that. Uh, yes. No, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wow. Well, so I can go for it then. Yeah. Well, Zach, as you, you, know, you and I have described, when people talk about like how complicated the X-Men uh, history is, when I, st- I remember one night I was trying to explain to you the Flash. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and you're, you looked at me like a dog staring at a passive <laughs> yeah. train, like, no, what? that's. So what I'm doing right now, buckle in, okay. everybody. Did you get the whiteboard right. out to, to start doing charts was, and diagrams? Yeah, there were a lot of yeah. strings going to stuff. So basically what happens is, is Barry finds out that, that Zoom has, has killed Iris, right? And then um, it's one of those things where he, he, you know, he goes after him. They, get, they go after him. And they're in a time bubble. At one point, I remember as a kid reading this in the, in the backseat of a car. And Barry finds out that he's killed Iris, and he literally, and this is no lie, you can look it up, I'd have, to, I'd have to find the issue for you, we can put it up on the website. But there's a part where Barry, like literally at super speed, bounces uh, Zoom's head, like on the ground, it's, it's super speed. And it's, you know, it's, it, even as a kid, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> so, he, they get lost in the time stream, Barry gets back to the main, t- main timeline, um, and he thinks Zoom is at least gone for that point on for a while. Barry, like, you know, gets on with his life. Iris has, you know, passed away. He meets this other woman named Fiona. Well, again, the reverse flash comes back, threatens to kill Fiona, and is running at, uh, at super speed to get a snap her neck. And Barry grabs him around and snaps his neck first and kills Professor Zoom. Murders him. Really. Okay. And then you have the trial of the flash, and then he gets kicked out of the Justice League, and then crisis happens. So, okay, so this is where I've always been confused. Reverse flash and Zoom are the same person? Yes, the reverse. It was pre- for the long for the longest time. It was Professor Zoom, the Reverse Flash. Now, that <laughs> that that character is gone, right? Okay. And then and then you have Hunter Zolomon in, in in when it's Wally West as a Flash. It's one of those things where uh, so we're in the nineties now. Yes, publication wise, we're in the nineties now. Okay. Yes, Jeff Johns introduces his character Hunter Zolomon, right? Um, he didn't appreciate the fact when I asked him if Hunter Zolomon was Zoom. Didn't care for that at all. Mm-hmm. Um, before the reveal, I asked him at a show and he was not pleased. Um, <laughs> just a you know, word of the wise to people that approaching writers at shows when you know something before the, before the other audience, the rest of the audience does, you don't want to necessarily ask him because he was not thrilled. He's like, no, there's no way. No. Um, <laughs> just a sidebar there. But no, Hunter Zalman is introduced. He's a, he's a, he's a profiler for like villains at Iron Heights. Like he's kind of a super villain profiler. Um, he gets hurt, but he gets, basically gets mixed up with Grodd. Grodd cripples him. Uh, at one point, he says to Wally West, his you know the, the Flash, his friend, says, "Hey, listen, I know that cosmic treadmill thing will work if you can go back in time and stop this from happening to me." And he's Wally's like, "I can't do that. That's not how it works." And then Hunter Zellman takes it upon himself to use a cosmic treadmill, like crawling on it, whatever. <laughs> As a result, it explodes, okay. and he be- he becomes per- he becomes Zoom at that point. And then he's able to like he's not so much able to run at super speedy as he is sort of like to blip around through time. Okay, everybody got that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so whatever. And then, and then after New 52, all bets are off. Cause I think at one point, Iris's brother is Zoom or something. And I, I couldn't tell you for sure. Cause I haven't read it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, 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 I'm a huge fan of the original Zoom. Cause like I said, I think he's just a great villain. And I think he, um, you know, he's, he's a good opposite to Barry. 
Right. No, I am too. I love reverse flash too, but this is a situation where almost, I think it's like, it's like, it's almost to your benefit to just read like one story and not really go into the history that much. Cause well, I mean, cause, cause I, like, I mean, it's confusing. <laughs> sure. Well, I mean, I, I mean, cause it's all, it's all a lot of time travel stuff. I would be also remiss if you've never read, um, some of what Mark Wade does with, with, uh, with him. That's really okay. good too. Early on yeah. in the Wally stuff, but again, it's, you know, I don't want to give too much away on that one cause it is a great story. So yeah, it's a great run. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, check, check it out. So I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make the next one very simple. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. And I'm gonna say uh the Green Ranger from Power Rangers. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. This one is interesting to me because this is the rate like this is the one that only ever that everybody only cares about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah, loves version. everybody loves a Green Ranger. They hyped him up yeah. so much. Yeah. It screams of like like sometimes when you have a character you like so much and you give him like all the best stuff because it's like because he's got he's got like the jewel in the helmet and none of the other ones do he's got the cool like gold armor and he's got the flute that calls in his zord uh, like none of them have all this cool stuff did you ever see the movie the what movie the movie Which, that the, they- the newest one or 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 the one from whatever, 95, 96? The new one. The newest with, one. With Billy from yeah. Stranger Things. Yeah, I saw the new one. Yeah. 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 That was a travesty that they didn't give it out a sequel based upon <laughs> what <laughs> he you said. The Green Ranger should have been cast right with the rest of them. Right? And like, like, how do you not introduce him in the last scene? Oh, there's a new student. Tommy Oliver, here he is. And then everybody <laughs> like, oh, you get a sequel that yeah. way. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> but yeah, but that, but we never got it. And then there's also the the um thought that it was a girl maybe just because oh. yeah it was thought it, it they they never confirmed it was going to be a guy or a girl but mm-hmm. the, okay. but the lead into it should have screamed you know sequel just because oh, but that yeah been so awesome oh it'd have been great it would have been great yeah and i and i like the fan theory that was out there too that like that rita was like the original green ranger yes. the one that the one that turned evil and stuff there was stuff to <laughs> yeah. the movie's kind of, is like kind of uneven like bits of it are really cool and bits right. of it i think kind of fall flat yeah. a little bit but um yeah i thought that there was something there I it thought, was. like yeah i agree with you on that that one, one may be there. my favorite on the list i am not lying i love the green <laughs> ranger it did have a good cast in the in that movie <laughs> yeah it did <laughs> So any other ones out there? Oh, there's a bunch. Sinestro. Yeah, Sinestro oh, was one. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Green Lantern turned bad. Yeah. He broke yeah. bad. <laughs> yes, yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah, he's another great one. Yes. Also one of my favorites. Yeah. Got a lot of, uh, like, Frank, you and I talked about this, too, and I don't quite remember when it was introduced, but there was a point that there was an introduction of that he's got the lantern, the Green Lantern emblem, like, as a scar on his back. Yes. It's from in, a uh, battle. It's in Green Lantern Rebirth. Yeah. And I, and I actually like, I love the symbolism of that really much. Mm-hmm. So much. I love the idea that like, that it's, it's, you know, he carried the lanterns on his back, but it also turned his back on them and everything. You know, mm-hmm. I just like, yeah, I think it's a really, really cool uh, visual to add to his character. Or they're the monkey on his back. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, you know, I love Sinister. I think all that stuff that leads up to, um, like Sinestro Core War and the the war itself is a, is just some really good, you know, really great comic books. I mean, honestly, yeah. they're really, really good stuff. Um, yeah, I've always liked Sinestro. I mean, I think it, it gets to an nth degree when you get it out to the white and white lanterns and all that stuff or white lantern and that stuff. But, you know, if you're just talking strictly at that point before it keeps going on and on and on, I, I think Sinestro is a great villain. Yeah, no, he's good. We glossed over Bizarro a little bit. Let's, let's you know, double um, back. Bizarro, probably the most famous version because of the Seinfeld episode. Sure. I'll say, you know, then, then hurt. He's a great idea. He's a great visual and everything. I, you know, you guys can chime in on this a little bit more, but like, I'm kind of hard pressed to think of a really great Bizarro story mm. out there, though. I think that wh- when it kind of changed and he was sort of thought of as more of like misguided. I, mm-hmm. I don't I don't know that there's been anything out there that's really like like pulled me in as a great villain anymore, you know? Mm-hmm. But depends on which um bizarre you're talking about because there's versions of him that some people agree with that don't agree with. Like are you talking about Clone Bizarro or 
alternate dimension Bizarro, you know? Right. Right. I'm just thinking like, so when back when they were making all star Superman into an animated movie, I remember thinking like, wow, like there's so much to that story. What are they going to cut? And immediately my mind was like, Oh, those three Bizarro issues, like (laughs) top to bottom, those can all go. (laughs) Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And my thought process was like, and I I like those issues, but my thought process, if anybody was going to make it really cool, it was going to be Morrison. And then it is, it's, it's fun, but there's nothing lasting about it there to me, you know? Right. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, I think it's one of the things where I, you know, I like Bizarro as a concept and then it's one of the things where I enjoy Bizarro issues. But I think when someone really gets like, and exa- starts sifting through Bizarro, you know what I, if what I mean is like gets really intent on Bizarro in the backward language and well, this is it. Oh, I'm like, you know, I don't think a deep examination of Bizarro's motivation is something that's necessary. Right. No. <laughs> but I really like the character and I like the idea of him. But I feel like it's one of those things where people get too involved in what all that means. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, I agree. I would like to see him in a movie. I think that would be cool. I think the idea of having, like, you know, whoever's playing, like Henry Cavill, like Henry Cavill, like doing a double role (laughs) thing and playing, I think that would be super fun, you know, because we haven't seen a ton of, I mean, I'm sure Smallville probably did something like that, but. It could be Henry Cavill with a mustache as Bizarro and (laughs) without as Superman. There you go. (laughs) Problem solved. But yeah, I I think, I'm trying to think, I, I know Tomasi had one on his last run in Superman, which was pretty good. But I think it's a tendency to to it gets it gets past the idea of him being backwards to him being dumb to being like a genuine threat because he was you know so you know it's almost along the lines of like if you've ever seen um, the the Universal Frankenstein mm-hmm. I think people get a tendency of like of, of wanting him to be like Frankenstein of putting the kid in the water right yeah right. yeah they do that a lot I <laughs> yeah. feel that a lot you know that I think that so moment too. happens and that happens a lot with Bizarro and it's one of those things I'm like. I guess, but at the same time, <laughs> you know, you know, Frankenstein's monster didn't understand it, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I get it in the movie. I just don't know if it's something that, that needs to be extended to that character because I think it's a fine line between like, this is a cool Silver Age AD and the horror of actually having a, you know, imperfect duplicate of Superman. Right. So. I, I will say that one of my favorite instances of Bizarro is the Justice League Unlimited when they're doing like, it's like, you know, season five when they have the... Uh, uh, the Legion of Doom and the Darth Vader helmet, you know, and they're all do right. and, and they're all like teaming up to fight the Justice League and stuff like that. I like the moment where like Lex knows how to talk to him, mm-hmm. and Lex knows how to steer him to to get what he wants accomplished. And I thought that that was really really cool. That like it's like a language he speaks where he yeah. just like without thinking about it, he just looks at him and he can, you know, speak in the op- opposite <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, kind of kind of talk. And he's like, and then Bizarro's like, okay. You know, I hated or, or not the okay, talk. and then he goes and does it. You know, you hated. I hated the talk because right. it, it got super confusing. Right, like, he, like <laughs> yeah. gosh, I love Justice League action, but the bizarre episodes in which he articulates what he wants to do and he does and he doesn't. It's like <laughs> it, it becomes just weird. It, it, it's like it doesn't work if you think yeah. about it. Just the inkling, even in its simplest set, it's like why is he doing this? That's not <laughs> yeah, the opposite right. of that. You know, right? Yeah. Sure, sure. I think it's hard for writers to keep track of a lot of times too. Yes, yeah. yes. No, I, I agree too. Like it, you, it's you know, you, you could go too far with that pretty easily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, like, that's not the opposite of, of Coca Cola, Sprite is. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. 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 Well, no, it's not. Yeah. It's water. No, yeah. it's Sprite. <laughs> like, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so so let's shift gears then to to original Ooh. bad guys. So Ooh, before we do original bad guys, we we failed to mention. I want to co- name a couple. That okay, no, go head. for it. Captain America, Red Skull. Okay. We have um, is that yeah? That's Doppel King. Well, yeah, you, and then t- you you might need to fill me in on that one a little because bit because didn't they change the Red Skull being the person that also got the serum? In the movies, yes. In MCU. Yeah. Comics, not so much. No, not in the mm-hmm. comics. I'm talking about yeah. the MCU. Yeah, um, yeah, the MCU, yeah, yeah. He's, you could actually argue that Captain America is a, is a doppelganger of him. Okay. Ah, that's a good point. Um, Wolverine and Sabretooth? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Pretty, yeah, yeah. Okay. They've got the same power set. Yep. Yeah. The same origin in some tellings. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I yeah. mean, again, it, it, it's one of those, it comes that way after, because he first appears in Iron Fist. Mm-hmm. Right. And at that point, he's just sort of like, oh, he's a kind of a cool assassin type villain. 
And then when Claremont takes goes from being on Iron Fist with Burn to going to do Uncanny, I think they just fold that into whatever plan. I mean, there's no way to tell because I don't, there's no there's no real crossover with uh, with uh, Sabretooth or, or the X Men. But prior to that, okay. So it's one of the things where I think it just it's one of those. Oh well, this guy's got feral powers and healing, and so is this guy. So right. why wouldn't yeah. they be related? <laughs> I agree. No, I agree. Oh uh, yeah. No, I remember that. Yeah, Sabretooth is Wolverine's dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah Wolverine, Wolverine is Sabretooth's dad. We got all yeah. that stuff for a while until Origin. So yeah, Fantastic Four and Super Scroll. Sure. Okay. Now. Okay. Um, hold on. <laughs> Lightning so you're round. talking like the the scroll that takes on all of their powers. Yes. So like one arm is fire and like one arm is rock and one and leg stretches and stuff, right? Yeah. Yes, I exactly. guess one leg's invisible. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. I guess. <laughs> yes. I was gonna say monitor any monitor, but that was two on the nose. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think that's oh, the weird one is X Men. Okay. Mm-hmm. Every group they fight is just evil mutants. True. But it's not like they're fighting like uh you know uh um uh, like it's not like Storm has a as a doppelganger or Colossus has a doppelganger or right no but know. it's to me I just see it as a group of evil mutants as opposed to a group of you know heroic mutants I mean you got like the acolytes the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants you know uh, sure yeah it, it's just a group of just evil mutants every time that's that was just weird to me Hellfire Club evil mutants. You know, no, just, I mean, I get you. Yeah. But I, I, to me, like doppelganger is like a little bit, it's a little closer than that. Right. Like there, there needs to be, there, there's like a, a, a power set that's the same or a visual that's the same or a gimmick, you know, like one that we didn't talk about was black Adam, right? Black right. Adam. Yeah. Is a I was going to say yeah. Shazam and black or Captain Marvel and black Adam. I yeah. I was going to yeah. say that too. So, yeah. but no, I get, I get a little one-on-one. I like with green arrow and Merlin, I guess. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, but, just, but but if you do want to go with a group, we didn't we didn't talk crime syndicate. Right? Yeah, no. yeah, yeah. Right. I was gonna see Owl Man and um Batman. Yeah. Well, yeah. all of them really. I mean. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So Power yeah. Ring. Yeah, Power Ring and the the Johnny Quick and Ultraman, Superwoman. No, I was I was I've always got a soft spot for the uh, the crime syndicate. I love you know love them in the books. Um, Crisis on Two Earths, the animated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's a great movie. Yeah, and Great Morrison's really Earth Two. Really yeah. good. Another good one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's always fun to see the, the 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 you know what the heroes might be like if they were evil. You know, the capital E. Mm-hmm. Um, I always thought it was interesting that that their version of Wonder Woman is Lois Lane. I thought that was kind of a <laughs> <laughs> you know a funny choice, but I thought I mean it's kind of cool because it's not you know you think of all those those Silver Age stories where she gets superpowers or an All Star Superman where she gets superpowers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Some, some, uh, I love the crime syndicate. Very fun. Mm-hmm. Check out Crisis yeah. on Two Earths. It's so good. Oh, yeah. It's so oh, good. Yeah. So much fun. Okay. So and, are, we, are we ready for original now or, or is there a couple more? Oh, no. I'm ready. I think there's a couple more. I'm, I'm sure there's a few more that we missed. There's actual, sure. you know, yeah. No, I was thinking like uh, just outside of tele, like outside of like comics and stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you sort of get like, um, what was the one I was thinking? Oh, oh, with, uh, with Buffy and Faith. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's a whole, that's a whole, another take on what it would be like if a slayer is not i mean she's she walks a fine line of being good and bad and then at one point she just throws in with a big bad for the season the mayor and it's definitely you know because early on she, it basically buffy becomes like what the what the when the milk toasty kind of good girl slayer would be as opposed to faith being the bad mm-hmm. that was one i was thinking about and then i also think one of the classic episodes of star trek is mirror mirror <laughs> sure yeah yeah you know you know, when you get a transport a transport accident, and then uh, Kirk and 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 I think it's Kirk and Uhura gets, or some other, a couple others get switched into the Mirror Mirror universe, mm-hmm. and the and the the Federation is really a militaristic uh, conquering <laughs> uh, gang or group, and it's always interesting. I think that's one of my favorite Star Trek episodes too. Oh sure, I mean it's just about everybody's too, right? Like you know, that one, ta- that one I think informed. If it's not the Tribbles, it's that. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one informed also like the visual, right? Like that was like Spock with the beard, mm-hmm. which that's been aped, sure. you know, a ton, a ton of times in in, in other shows and everything. I, you know, I'm blanking on some of the instances where we've seen it, except for except Community. for Venture Brothers, the joke where where Hank's got the goatee, and he's like. 
you know, what is it? 21 is like, dude, you should totally grow that. Right. You're like mirror, mirror <laughs> Hank. Right. <laughs> right. Well, that's like, yeah. Like Tommy was saying, the community has an episode when they, when they start in the, when they talk about the darkest timeline, all of them are, you know, are supposed to either have or grow goatees. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yeah. That goatee becomes a shorthand for being your, your evil duplicate. So. Yeah, sure does. Sure does. So. Yeah. All right. So are there any more outside of comics? That's true. We didn't go outside of comics, really. Mm. Uh, oh, another one we didn't think of that we that should have been. We're talking about uh, Justice League or Justice League Unlimited was the Justice Lords. I know they're kind of, kind of like the crime yeah. syndicate. But that was one that I thought about. Yeah. That one, yeah. But that uh, the distinction there, I mean, that they're literally them. Mm-hmm. It's literally the Justice League right. just in a timeline where something goes bad and then they turn evil. Right. Right. So it's not. It, yeah. Where, whereas like the crime syndicate, it's different people. Right. Just right? same power sets. Really. Same right. power it's set. Not, but it's, it's different not people. Bruce Wayne is Al man. Yeah. No. Right. Well, I mean, that's thing I love about the Justice Lords, especially when you get that last season of Justice, uh, Justice League before you go to Unlimited is the idea that you know, this timeline that they've, they've seen, or this other timeline that they visit and they've seen these evil versions of themselves, it sort of gets teased out the idea that that could happen in the timeline we're in, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's a nice game of, well, you know, is this the thing that's going to, you know, the thing, this big moment is going to, going to, to push them over the edge into becoming these justice Lords. Yeah. is pretty great. I mean, granted in a season where a lot of things going, there's a lot of like plates in the air. (laughs) There's, there's an interesting, like, laying the groundwork for that too that's in the episode that's in that justice lords episode where Mm -hmm. where batman is fighting his his counterpart right and it's and it's the action is staged in a way where you don't really know which one is saying what right right and and like and, and it can be argued that that the stuff that they're saying could be the philosophy of either one of them Mm-hmm. right and i thought that that was an interesting way to tie it i don't know if it was intentional like they knew where they were going in the next season, you know, or if that was just like, oh, we can play off of that. Like that was just a neat idea that we had, that, but we're going to play off of that, you know? Right. Yeah. And another non comics one that we've talked about, but not yet tonight here is uh Thalog from Gargoyles. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How did I forget that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The, uh, what was it? Clone of Goliath. Yeah. Yeah, he's the clone of Goliath. And Thalog is is Goliath backwards, right. but th- but they all had doppelgangers too. Like they all had, uh, they're all named after cities in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, you remember? I can't remember all, but like I remember Malibu was one of them, and <laughs> the the evil doppelganger of New York. Yeah. I guess I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thalog is. Um, Thalog got to be like a really important character. It just seemed like it was this one sort of like, of course, duh, everybody's going to do the evil twin episode. Right? right. But he was a character that, that really like became important down the line, you know? And then, and then also if you play, if you play around on the ask Greg website, the, the uh, creator of gargles, Greg Weissman's website where he answers fan questions and stuff like that. Like, I mean, you know, there was a clear indication that he had big plans for Thalog moving forward. So, oh, bring back gargoyles. Sure. <laughs> Please. Yeah. But no, I thought what, one thing I thought about doppelganger villains, and it's one of those things where it's good. I think it's a good transition to where we're talking about original villains is the idea that what was the, I can't remember the NBC at one point decided they were going to update bionic woman. Right. Mm. Uh, and they, and they brought in uh, Katie Sackhoff to be, the sort of anti-bionic woman like she was the one that we could come before and she's like turned rogue and killing people and then they introduce her in the beginning of the epi- like the, the pilot and then, then they bring in michelle what's her name i can't remember the actress um from battlestar is that her no, no she's michelle the, ryan she, the british actress michelle ryan right michelle ryan to be the bionic woman and and i always remembered like they played like i felt like they played katie sackoff's character too soon because I was much more interested in what was going to go on with Katie Sackhoff's character mm-hmm. as this sort of anti, you know, sort of evil bionic woman. They gave her too big a push too early and took away yeah, the spotlight yeah. from their actual star. Right. Yeah. And they launched her far too soon. And so it was kind of like, well, you know, I'm obviously, and, you know, they sort of have a back and forth in the first episode about, you know, about what it means to work for, for the whatever OSI group they work for or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was one of the things where like with doppelgangers, one of the things about it is. If you make your villain, 
<laughs> that much more exciting than your hero. You know, I always feel like it's ever since then, especially I felt like, well, you know, you got to be careful not to have that character overshadow your protagonist. And that's exactly what I felt that show did. Right. So that's why it was one of the things of, of like, when I was thinking about this episode, I thought more about the idea of, you know, that's why when you get to the idea of having a character that doesn't have the same power set or doesn't have the same, you know, or reverse costume mm-hmm. of, of the hero, that, you know, is really important. Because I, I think back to like stuff like when I was a kid, you know, one of the most coveted books I wanted and I could never find outside of like the library was Bring on the Bad Guys, right? Yeah, if, yeah. You've ever see, if you've ever seen that like painted cover, it's 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 Red Skull and it's uh, uh, Doom and um, Dormammu and Green Goblin and all these big, for the time, really big Marvel villains. And I remember thinking back that not many of them were, they weren't doppelgangers, right? Yeah. You know, they were characters unto themselves and there really wasn't a lot of, you know, like I said, revert, you know, Venom obviously was decades away. So there wasn't like a whole big push to have these villains be the antithesis directly of the characters. And I thought that was kind of one of those moments of like, oh, well, you know, it's important to have characters that can stand on their own and not necessarily be tied to another character. I'm looking at the cover now. Is that also Mephisto and Abomination on the cover? Yes. I can't tell. Yeah. 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 yeah they're <laughs> on there too. So, I mean, why do you think it works? so well do you think it works well it like is it is it just an easy card to play right that it's just like duh, okay we're gonna do an evil twin thing and that's always interesting right right or is there more there i think sometimes you know you can have a character that does you know live and breathe and happen to have the same power set and then i think sometimes it's you know we got to put another book out next month what do we do mm. <laughs> you know and sometimes that character takes on a life of their own or they don't right I think that there's also like a category because because Black Panther's jumping into my head too, and that's one of those things where like Killmonger's not exactly the doppelganger thing, but like in in the moment where he gets like the Black Panther like technology and stuff like right. that, and he's and he's literally like in the other suit, he's in the yellow suit, right? right? Like in that moment, he becomes sort of like like the the skewed version of him, right? Mm-hmm. You know, but but. You know, he's a tough one for me because I can argue myself in or out of that, depending, right? I mean, I mean, it depends on how you look at him. I mean, yeah. one, he's one, he's his cousin. Um, you can argue to say that he was born before him, so it was his birthright. Mm-hmm. Um, right. what else? Um, he, I mean, same lineage, uh, same training, except he just does it through ops, in which he uses it to kill as opposed to um, help his country. Oh no, right. he helps his country just in a dark sort of way yeah he you know? seeks but he seeks it out himself he seeks out that um the 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 power itself right yeah, yeah as opposed right. to like as opposed to t'challa that's you know that's granted that stuff because he's you know he's the son of the black panther he's the son of the king and all that stuff and everything right and it's his birthright to to be bestowed that stuff but killmonger like seeks it out right mm-hmm. and 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 even though it's not you know like the the lineage of the throne it's actually not his but he sees it to be like part of his yeah at least in the movie version at least yeah yeah well does that version appear in the books at all at any point like does he wear the black panther costume in the books like a christopher priest run or anything um hmm i don't think so i'd have to go back and look it's been a while since i read priest run I okay know. but um yeah i think it's one of the things where they um because a lot of that stuff is is based on the Don McGregor stuff that they did in the, the in the late seventies, like seventy eight, seventy nine, around that point. Okay. So I would have to I, that stuff. I haven't read all of that stuff, but I, I I read all of Priest Run. I don't remember if there is or not, so I'd have to look. But yeah, it's one of the things where, like I said, I I, t- I think as much as I like a good doppelganger, I mean, there's something to be said for somebody like like again, we've talked about how much you know we love Doom. Sure. <laughs> like to you know, I think. You know, Doom is introduced in, in issue five of the Fantastic Four. And then, you know, as a character still endures to today. So, right. You know, I think that, that, you know, when I was thinking of, again, I was like, as I thought about the Fantastic Four, I was trying to think of a lot of characters, you know, they had the frightful four, but it's not, it's not power for power. Right. Know, and you know, Doom, Doom, I think, like, you know, from an intellectual standpoint and stuff like that, like they're, they're, 
there are moments where he can kind of be like the antithesis to Reed, but there's also, but like they don't have the same powers, right? No. Like he's not, he, he's not like, like a, a reverse of the costume that's, that's, you know, almost in every version that we've, we've listed so far, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, that's, you know, I mean, they've had, you know, they've had intellectual battles and they've had, I think 200 is probably fantastic Four 200 is probably the best place. If you're going to see the two of them actually like physically throw down. <laughs> I highly recommend Fantastic Four 200. I would read 199 before it because it's a good lead in. Mm. But 200, they have an actual fight in Latveria in the castle. And it's pretty intense. Again, for be- I remember being in, you know, at the time I read it, I was maybe nine or 10. <laughs> and there's, you know, there's one point where, you know, Dune's practically choking, for, you know, read to death. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's one of those things where you don't really see a lot of that. Doom doesn't tend to get his hands dirty. Like he'll fight with you, but he's not going to get like close up like that. It's got a robot army to do that for him. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you, you really feel the intensity of the hatred but for Doom for Reed, which is, you know, another thing about Doom that I've always liked is that, you know, Doom just doesn't, you know, it's, it's, it's an emotional response that you don't always get with Doom. A lot of time it's just, I'm better than you. And in that, in that particular issue, it's definitely a feeling of, oh no, this dude hates you. <laughs> this guy would, you know, if you give him the chance, he would definitely, not I'm going to get you curses, Richards. I mean, he really would kill you. <laughs> You know, you don't always get that. I don't think it always is as well defined it is as in that issue. So, but I mean, it was. A, I was thinking again about about individual villains, and another one that I always think gets a little too much of the. They're two sides of the same coin. Is the Joker, right? I mean, yeah. it's one thing's where it's much more of a of a modern um, uh, take on the character. Where I'm like, I don't really think they're two sides of the same coin all that much at all. No, I so. I was going to get into this too. I think that there's the, there's a certain category that that are opposites, but isn't right. a doppelganger, right? Like, mm-hmm. like I don't see Batman and Joker as two sides of the same coin or opposite sides of the same coin, but I see the opposite thing in the sense that you have, you know, colorful, manic, evil, right on the mm-hmm. side of like monochromatic, grim, good guy. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, they play off of each other in that way, but there's nothing about like, you know, jo- Joker's not like, uh, uh, you know, didn't also travel the world for 10 years and, you know, become <laughs> right. the greatest, the greatest martial artist and the greatest escape artist and the greatest detective in the world. Right. right. Like, <laughs> you yeah. Know? There's no, yeah, there's no super villain school or he's gone to, that he's gone around the world doing all this stuff. Yeah, no, I agree with you. Yeah, sure. Le- Lex and Superman are the same thing, right? Like, Mm-hmm. You know, like powered, non-powered, right. hair, not hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, right. Sure. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. But like, I mean, he's the antithesis in the sense that like that, you know, Superman's primary thing is is his might. Right. And mm-hmm. Lex, it's his 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 intellect. Superman never ha- has never had to be a genius. Right. Right. To, to save the world. But Lex, you know, in his attempts to be you know, help humanity, help humanity and get his own take, right? Whatever, <laughs> you know, he's gotten there right. on his own. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I just one things like that was the biggest thing when I was thinking about this episode was just trying to look at, you know, arch villains, you know, your, your typical, you know, arch enemy of somebody. And I'm like, well, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of doppelgangers in there, but there's not so many, there's a lot of them that aren't as well. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, for every reverse flash, I look and see, well, yeah, they're, this, they're, 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 they're pretty opposite or they're pretty on opposite sides of the same coin. I could see that. But, you know, when I think of like your Doom and your Joker, we brought up the Red Skull earlier and it was one of the things where I th- he's, I think he fits in both categories because he is kind of the antithesis at the time of what, you know, I mean, the Nazis in, in, in World War II, I mean, that right. whole thing. Of, and then the fact that he's the opposite of Cap and Cap is not, you know, that way at all. Yeah. But at the same, but at the same time, I, I think of you know, I still think of him as being much more his own thing. Like I think the Red Skull could be used in other areas of the Marvel universe as opposed to just being a Captain America villain. Mm-hmm. You know, and then yeah, I yeah. think that you know, I think that would work, and I don't think that happens quite often. I think there was there's an early point in early '90s where someone said, uh, and I can't remember who it was, whether it was Joe Kelly or Joe Casey or one of those guys that decided that why wouldn't the Red Skull be an X Men villain too? Right. Yeah, you know, well, would- I mean, they, they've had moments where people have played with it, 
right? Because because right after um, Avengers versus X Men, mm-hmm. right, and and that kicks off like in the aftermath of that, you get Uncanny Avengers. I, right. Like Red Skull's the big bad of that first arc. I remember sure. and it's essentially yeah, yeah. Red Skull with like with like Xavier's powers, which is mm-hmm. terrifying. Sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But yeah, I agree with you. He's got potential to be. You know, sometimes you get villains that are like that are that can fight the universe instead of just one the one character that they're sort of aligned with, you right. know, or or um, associated with. I should say, not aligned with. Well, that's how I think it is. Like again, with with having an original villain like say Thanos, right? Mm. Thanos is one of those characters that sort of you know grows out of you know being in in Warlock or being in Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel, the original Captain Marvel. That grows out of that to being a much more, you know, a much bigger threat, you know, eventually, you know, over time, his whole plot of, you know, trying to put together the infinity, you know, picking up the gems and putting together the infinity gauntlet, you know, is something that it really does take decades to finally get to that point. Right. You know, it's a long, slow plod (laughs) for him. I mean, obviously, it's not one of those things where it's first introduced, but, you know, it's one of those definitely when 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 he finally gets there, it's something to be said for, you know, again. He's not really a doppelganger of anybody at Marvel. He's more of a doppelganger of Darkseid. Yeah. But yeah. so so it's one of those things where it's kind of interesting to see that, you know, because you get that stuff too where Marvel and DC char- create, you know, create char- versions of their characters for different companies. So, right. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll throw Cheetah in there. Like, che- Cheetah's like, there's no connection to Wonder Woman as far as like, like the hook of the character, right? Just, right. You know, like she's. <laughs> You know, she's cat obsessed. She's cat themed and nervous. She's fast. She's got claws. You know, there's nothing. There, there's no doppelganger for Wonder Woman and the, like there, you know. Right. Yeah. But she's a great one. I like and, I, you know, and I think back to. um, uh, Oh, God, what's the name of the book? Um, Catwoman, when in Rome, right? The the mm-hmm. Tim Sale, Jeff Lowe book that is supposed to take place like in between chapters of like Long Halloween. Cheetah shows up there as a foil for Catwoman, and that's also kind of like a duh. Like, why hasn't anybody played with that before? Yeah, it right. takes a long time. It takes a long time to get there. It's one of those things where it's um, what is it? It's, it's one of the events towards the end of uh, again before I believe right before Flashpoint when Catwoman book is wrapping up. There's a point where they, um, what is it? It's not Villains United. It's one of those villains books. Where basically they you know, villains are basically having to choose sides between who they whose side they're on. They're either on like the Joker or Luthor's side, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. And it eventually comes down to the Catwoman is sort of in between because she's, you know, she's not a capital V villain. She is, but she's not like you know, them. She's also played heroic for so, you know, they're for, quite a force. She's kind of kind of caught in the middle of it all. Yeah. And at one point, you have a fight, a pretty you know, a pretty brutal fight between Catwoman and, and Cheetah. And again, like you said. I can't believe it took as long as it took to get to that. Yeah. No, I mean, it's like they fit together really well. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think, I, th- I think that there's, um, I don't know. I feel like there's almost more freedom with coming, right? Cause you're not pegged into, into making sort of a, well, how can I, how can I take, you know, green lantern story and how can I make it make, make a villain out of this, which, mm-hmm. You know, I'm not poo-pooing that. I mean, there's fun to be had with that, clearly. Like we said, I love Sinestro. Sinestro's one of the best in the category of doppelganger villains for me. But I think, you know, that but you don't get I'm trying to think like you don't get like Two Face, <laughs> you know, playing right. off of that, right? Right. No, no. Weird example, he's his own doppelganger. Uh <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. You know? What about Catman? You do get Catman. Very you true. You do. Yeah. Batman has a, a lot of like half like there's a couple of different characters out there where yeah, like other rich people who turned evil. Yeah. Instead yeah of exactly. Like <laughs> like penguin penguin can be like kind of a, like like an evil Bruce Wayne from you know if you squint if you squint at it <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. Um, you know Raish. There's Al Man. Prometheus is another one. Yeah. Prometheus is another Batman like yeah. doppelganger type, you know, um, the wrath. That's what I was going to say. The the one that's the actual doppelganger like people forget about and yes. he doesn't get used much at all. Nope. Not you know? at all. Yeah. So for people that don't know, Frank, do you want to do it or, sh- or should I do it? No, you go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, so the wrath is basically, so he's the, the, the doppelganger of Batman. Uh, uh, his costume looks 
very similar, but instead of bat ears, it's a W on his face that that extends above his head, so it looks like <laughs> ears. Right. <laughs> right. And mm-hmm. basically, I mean, it's the exact inverse of of you know Bruce. So Bruce's story, as everybody knows, his parents are killed by a criminal, and then he, you know, goes out to you know, fight criminals, right? Spe- devotes his life to, to, you know, warring on all criminals, as it said, right? Brath mm-hmm. is, you know, he is the son of crooks and they're, and his parents get gunned down by a police officer <laughs> as they're trying right. to escape. And then he decides at that point, he's going to war against all heroes, <laughs> you know? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Doesn't get used much at all. He's, he's in an episode of the Batman uh, you know, but I mean, also he wasn't created all that long ago, to be perfectly honest. He's a Mike Barr character from the eighties. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. From an annual, right? Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a ridiculous costume too, but he's a fun <laughs> character though. We'll, po- right. we'll post the, the, the cover of his first appearance on let me know how it is.com. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, I think, but you know, I also kind of, not that he's a super villain, right? But he's, he, he could have dabbled into it is you know you get under the original category you get characters like jameson right like Mm -hmm. you know jameson has never himself gone after spider-man right right outside of you know like you know hiring the scorpion to go after him and stuff but like he's just somebody he's just a regular guy who just makes life really hard for peter right you know and i like that that you can get you that, that there's tears to the power level of things, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm surprised you guys didn't mention the flashes. I, I love to me the um, ones that aren't his doppelgangers, like Captain Cold and Gorilla Grodd. Yeah, the rest of the rogues. Sure. Yeah. 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 I mean wrong. Uh, me fighting a, a gorilla on any level is scary. Just to put that <laughs> out there, you know. That's one of those things where like I, I always people are like uh when people are sort of like, you know, uh the T V show. I'm like, the T V show does a great job for what they've got. Um, they really do well with the Gorilla Grodd stuff, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, the episode where they first introduced Gorilla Grodd and Jesse L. Martin's reaction to what Grodd Grodd would be like is he's terrified. Like, obviously, like, like Tommy was saying, having to fight a gorilla on any level, much less a, you know, a super powered, uh, telepathic gorilla (laughs) is, you know, it's, is, you know, it it would be a scary, I think it'd be scary for anybody, much less anybody with superpowers. Has the show ever done, uh, What's his name? Was it? Is it Tortoise Man? The turtle? Yeah, the turtle. There we go. Yeah, turtle, yeah. yeah the turtle's been in a couple episodes. <laughs> Has it really? Yeah. No kidding. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah I got kind of a soft spot for him. So there was there was a point I remember Frank, you and I were talking about doing like like a fan fiction spec script for a Flash mm-hmm. cartoon, yep. and and I needed to study up. So you gave me like a ton of Flash books, and one of the first stories I read had the turtle in it, and I was like. Mm-hmm. I was like, there's something here. I don't quite know how we make <laughs> the slowest man alive right. into a threat for the fastest man alive. But I'm like, there's something <laughs> there's right. something I so desperately want to try and make work with it. But like, yeah, it was Aaron Douglas, who was the chief on um, was the chief on Battlestar Galactica, played the, a version of the turtle in the, the, the Flash show. Oh, really? I love chief. Yeah. How could you not? <laughs> Chief's <Yeah>. awesome. <laughs> He's great. So how, how do they make it work? I'm curious. Uh, they, be, if I remember correctly, it was not so much that he was slow himself, but he sort of slowed time around him. Uh, okay. Power upgrade. So, so basically with Barry, we try to approach him. He would just basically get caught in a way, a field of some sort that slowed him down. If I remember correctly. Okay. Okay. But yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It, they've done it. I mean, they've, they've, uh, you know, like I said, I'm always amazed at what they, they draw from, but, um, you know, the Grod's a great one. Captain Cole's a great one. Um, you know, love Heat Wave, love the top. <laughs> I love all those, you know, I love all the rogues. Captain Boomerang. Yeah. You know, Mirror Master, love- the trickster. Sure. How can you yeah. not love all those characters? But again, you know, nobody's nobody's a straight up supervillain. I mean, nobody's a straight up doppelganger, I should say. They're all supervillains, though. Mm. So yeah, I think I think there's something to be said for, you know, for having having that to draw from for, for if you were doing the flash, as well as the fact that, you know, at some point uh go to Leobard Thon's gonna show up. So right. So what do you guys prefer if you're gonna pick a side, right? Like you know, if you had to choose one, do you make your villains in the doppelgangers or do you or do you prefer the original route? Oh. Oh well I mean at the end of the day I believe that it's all about the revenge or the intent 
Because, I mean, it depends on the intent of the villain, regardless of his powers. Like, we've seen a great example in The Flash in which some of his best stories are against somebody with his own powers. Mm -hmm. And then there's Superman, who, you know, the guy that has no powers at all is his biggest threat. And every time he steps on the scene, it's it's the challenge of the universe against Superman, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, and then there's the the weird stuff, like, we didn't mention, like, Teen Titans and Deathstroke. You know? Yeah. 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 Complete opposite. And yeah. they, they, you know, they can't even beat him. And this is a guy with the bare minimum of powers. He's just really, really, really good at what he does. You know, do the Titans have a doppelganger team? Uh, is not, is there like a teenage villain team that fights the Teen Titans? They've done it. It's in um, I, I, was, say, I was like, they must have right. Like you yeah, talking about like Hive or something? Was, there was a group that was put together after Jeff Johns did it. Like right in that same run, like when Jeff Johns puts together a team with uh that's a mix of the the new Teen Titans, which is like, you know, uh Starfire and Cyborg and Raven and Beast Boy, then you've also got uh Superboy and Cassie, uh Sandmark Wonder Girl and uh Tim Bart. Bart's in that team, I remember yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. It's the f- it's all of them together. Yeah. There's a group at one Bart point. Bart Allen believe- Impulse, who becomes Kid Flash. Sorry, right. just to clarify. A- yeah. Yeah, it's okay. No, um, at, at, there's a point during that run, like after Johns has left, I can't remember who the writer is on it. Um, someone takes over and they bring in a group that's a, sort of a, it's got Ravager and um, Inertia, which is like a Kid Flash evil, you know, like his, basically his Kid Flash is, you know, uh, Bart Allen's reverse Flash kind of a thing. Um, so yeah, there is a group, I just can't remember what they're called. Okay. Good. I'm glad somebody thought of it. Because yeah, it just hit me. I'm like... <laughs> I'm like, I can't really think yeah. of, of, of an instance or that. And it is sort of like, a, you know, it's, a, it's another one of those easy, like, oh, why don't you do that? But yeah. right. So, so, I mean, so Clifton, Frank, what side do you guys fall on? Like, like, which do you prefer? I might have to go doppelganger. I mean, I really thought I would go the other way and go original, but I think, I think most of the stories that I think about with doppelganger villains, I really, really do love. Not that I don't love, you know, original villain stories, but I might have to go doppelganger on this one. Okay. I'm kind of the opposite. Uh, like there's certainly like good evil twin, evil doppelganger stories, but I I just find myself a little more interested in the ones that are like counterpoint further, (laughs) not just like flipping an idea upside down, but like going to different ideas to see like what works as counterpoint to this. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm with you, Clifton. I just think from also like the sh- the sheer number of ideas possible by doing original, right? I think can make you know there's just more options to play from. As much as I love like you know your Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow stuff, <laughs> you know what I mean. And there are instances where like you you know your doppelganger is like the best the you know the best story that you can do. But yeah, I just think that you know it's it's so limiting also. I feel like, and, and I mean, truthfully, I like having both, but you know, right. if I had to pick one, I would go with, I would go with original bad guys, I think just cause you could do more with it. So, okay. So then to start wrap it up though. So, but does, do we have anybody in mind? That, like, is there a character out there that doesn't have a doppelganger bad guy that we think could be, that could use one? I mean, I think I don't want to say wonder woman, but that's the only one that I can think of. They've tried a few times with Wonder that, Woman. That's mine to too, though. <laughs> Nothing's stuck yet. Yeah. No, because they tried like I'm trying to. What was one? Um, Grail was one that they did when 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 Johns was on just Je- again Jeff Johns was on Justice League. They tried to introduce Grail mm-hmm. as being like the daughter of Darkseid that was also sort of somehow somehow oh, okay. tied yeah. to Wonder Woman. I can't remember how exactly, but. You know, it's one of those. That was the, the attempt. There's been another one that was in uh, Gail Simone's run. Mm-hmm. I can't remember that character's name, but there was also a character that was supposed to be. You know, it was not. Oh, I should be. I said that wrong. It's not necessarily her uh, doppelganger. It was more like her doomsday. Okay. So, that was another one, but it's not really the same thing. No, I mean that that was going to be my pick, Tommy. Yeah. I mean so. Uh, if, if you're not going to go with it, I'll run with it. Cause I was going <laughs> to, I was going to say wonder woman for sure. Not sure. Go right ahead. And no, and I was nervous about this because, because again, like, you know, um, wonder woman sadly doesn't have a huge number of like iconic 
stories to read. So my thing was like, this very well could have been done at some point, but you know, she's her whole thing is that she's going against like, like she's affiliated with like the Greek gods. Right. Mm -hmm. And my thought was like, well, why don't you do the doppelganger do like that? There's the Roman gods as well. Sure. Right. And just kind of have that as a hook. And so she's like the Roman version of wonder woman. Right. Right. And what is funny about Wonder Woman is her name is the Roman god for Artemis, but oh, is it? Uh, you know, yeah, I mean, <laughs> Diana is the Roman version of Artemis. You know, but I think that there's just something there is like you know, and you know, an Amazon that grows up on Themyscira, right? Who, you know, uh, uh, you know, they're they're a warlike society, right? So they're trained in war, they're trained in combat, battle, and all that stuff and everything, and they're of course segregated away from men right because it's an all woman island and then she steps out and sees the rest of the world as being man's world and she goes okay well we need to fix this like why are why why do we just have like one island that we rule like we should like i'm gonna take my my war training and my combat training and i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of do like an alexander the great thing and i'm gonna try and take over the world and i'm gonna try and take over the world and reshape it and give it to 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 women you know yeah like that's always like "Mm, there you go i don't know if it's any good but you know i like (laughs) the idea sure how about daredevil that's a good one okay yeah he doesn't have anybody (laughs) who's a doppelganger of his not at least not directly no i mean he's fought people who have similar powers like Bullseye, which can't miss, but does really different purposes, but it's not really a doppelganger. Right. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I'll say Daredevil. Okay. <laughs> That's a good choice. <laughs> if not, I was going to say Iron Man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was thinking about that too. I mean, he fights people with armor, but it's not like there's, you know, it's not like there's an evil Tony Stark that basically builds his own armor for, you know, nefarious yeah. purposes right well we called him dr doom but no one really looks at him that way yeah no not really i mean it's one of those things where it's kind of like two different two different kinds of motivation even though it's it is really good when they've you know basically fought each other one-on-one yeah yeah they're another natural pair off too though too i think i yeah. think dr doom and tony facing off is, is is an interesting thing i think also but i mean like it's a little bit in iron man too like, like the justin hammer like that version is kind sure. of sure you know, which which I think could have been fun if it stuck around. Also, right. because I love Sam Rockwell. <laughs> sure. If, if Sam well, Rockwell put on a suit, then yeah, yeah, put yeah, on yeah. the power suit, it would have been there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and danced I, in it. He would have had to have danced in the Iron Man suit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, <laughs> yes. Please. Can I have that anywhere? Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere oh. on a Disney Plus show. Make oh it happen. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Please make it happen. <laughs> Well, he's still in prison, right? Because the, the short. That's where that's where he was in the the Marvel one shot. Okay. Yeah, they never they never did anything with that. Yeah, yeah. What what would what would Daredevil's doppelganger be named? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> like Scaredy Cat. Yes, there you <laughs> go, Scaredy you know? Cat. <laughs> it's not very threatening. Instead no, of horns, it has cat ears. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think that would be fun. Yeah. No, no Thor. No, um, that's what that's what I was gonna say. Was that was the one that I had was Thor. I thought Thor really doesn't have. I mean, granted, he fights other gods and stuff, and they've been other pantheons, but there's not really, you know, you don't have a lot of him going toe. To, I mean, he goes a little toe with a lot of like threats of Asgard or Loki or whatever, but it's not right. the same thing as, you know, there's nothing iconic about Thor, a Thor doppelganger. I don't think. Well, we only got right. it twice, in my opinion. One okay. is Beta Ray Bill, but he doesn't turn into a villain. Right, and then yeah, there's right. the other example, which, what's Tony makes a clone of Thor, and it still beats like <laughs> Clor, is Clor, yeah, yeah Clor or whatever, <laughs> whatever the character was named. Right, yeah, he beats the snot out of him, I guess, which is weird because every yeah. time he faces somebody who has his powers, he always loses. Well, I mean, yeah, that doesn't make. Yeah, I agree with that because there's so many, and I think I've talked about this before. Like a lot of the eight, like 70s and 80s Avengers, like they're you know, the team is doing well until the villain like turns the turns it up to eleven and they're like, Oh my god, oh Thor gets here quick because we're all gonna die if we don't get here. So I would choose Thor. I think Thor is one of those that you know, I think they've tried with like I think with when when uh it was what Thunderstrike was that was the <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh right. Yeah, there yeah. was a character called like Blood Axe or something that was supposed to be like his 
his villain. But I'm trying to think of like this Thor- had to be in the 90s, right? Like right. Oh yeah. 90s. Yeah, yeah. When when uh, what's his Masterson? Is that his name? The character, like something Masterson. Like, but anyway, that was like like the character they brought in or created was this blood axe character to sort of be his foil. But there's not really one one particular character that I can think of that isn't like tied to Asgard or, you know, I think Thor could, if you could, if you could create a, a Thor doppelganger, that would be really cool. You know, <laughs> yeah. have some weapon that's as equally as mythic as Mjolnir and yeah, you know, all that that's, kind of stuff. Yeah. What's crazy is Marvel doesn't really rely on doppelgangers no. like DC. What again, I get back to the, the cover of the bring on the bad guys. Like that's like, that's their, their A-list villains and not one of them really. Yeah. No, I get well on the on that cover. You have Abomination, which we didn't bring up up the whole. Yeah, arguably Abomination's the only yeah. one out of that. Yeah, set. yeah. And yeah. with the and the funny part of that with the Hulk is you have a, for a long time standing villain is that, that Thunderbolt Ross. He turns wow. into well, yeah, but but he becomes one though. Yeah, sure. that's the funny part. He becomes a double caker. At the, yeah. But I guess everybody in Hulk becomes one eventually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I would argue like the Hulk's main villain is the leader. Yeah. No. Yeah. And super a, smart. Yeah. Yeah. And again, and again, that's brawn versus brain. That's not so much. You well, know, he never yeah. really hulks out. Yeah. Well, that's the same thing. That if you want to look at, that's sort of like Superman. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Which I do want them to bring back, uh, Tim Blake Nelson. Yes. Who they tease <laughs> as the leader in the Ed Norton Hulk movie, uh-huh. and I think a lot of people forget that for you know, probably good reason sometimes yeah. <laughs> but, but tim blake nelson is great and would be great to still have around an mcu as the leader oh yeah no yeah. i'm all for that too i, I second that clifton absolutely yep. i would definitely i third that. it <laughs> yeah well, so. it's unanimous then right there we go <laughs> very man. good all right all right all right feige you got two ideas tim blake nelson and, and <laughs> sam rockwell please yeah. Yes. Please, we want doppel we, not not doppelganger build, but we want villains <laughs> of them. Anyway, all right. So, how about you guys? We want to hear from you, listeners. Tell us in the comments what did we miss, who did we forget. While you're there, suggest a topic for us. Uh, find us on YouTube, and just don't forget to subscribe while you're there. And finally, don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com/slash. Let me know how it is, and follow us on Twitter at our show's initials L M K H I I. Thanks for listening, and we will catch you next time. <laughs>